Hello, I am Pastor Carl Bierman, Assistant to the Bishop for your Northeastern Ohio Synod. A special greeting to each of you as we celebrate this fifth Sunday of Easter and as we celebrate Mother's Day. Today's reading comes to us from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. The introductory notes read, Christ is the cornerstone of God's saving work and the foundation of our lives. We are God's chosen holy people who continuously celebrate and declare the mercy of God we experience through Jesus Christ. First Peter reads, Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Peter is the namesake for today's scripture reading. Peter means stone or rock. Jesus intends that Peter be the foundational stone, that strong leader for Jesus' people, the church. But Peter is stubborn and at times lacks faith and proves to be a stumbling block to the spread of Jesus' love, so much so that Peter even comes to doubt himself. What stumbling blocks might we face today in this world of the coronavirus? What stumbling blocks get in our way of sharing Jesus' love what stumbling blocks might get in our way of building up God's people, the church? Let us consider the plight of meatpacking workers, people who work minimum wage jobs in stores, the poor, people of color, health care workers, the owners of mom and pop businesses, people who must work in order to survive and put themselves in harm's way with the coronavirus, people who feel that they must choose between working and not being able to survive. Then at the same time, we have that great American tradition of personal freedom. Yet that freedom today seems to have been taken to an extreme. Charlie Warzel, an editorialist, writes that freedom 
has now become the justification for people doing whatever they want without considering the impact of their actions upon others. All of that taken to yet another extreme results in the calculation that we hear today. People calculating what is an acceptable number of people dying in order that we might be able to continue living our lifestyles, opening up the economy. What is an acceptable number of deaths? Yet we remember that the word of God says that every life is precious. We have that debate today that seems to have torn us apart as a people. That debate of whether people should wear masks or not. I am not talking about people who have legitimate reasons for not wearing masks, but in those cases where some will say that they have the right not to wear a mask, even though that might put other people at risk of contracting the coronavirus. Verse 10 in our reading carries a warning. Once you were not a people, once you had not received mercy. Jesus' intent is that we be one people of God, that we be a people in which we can give and receive mercy. In other words, Jesus, his loving intent for us is that we be a people who show kindness to one another without worrying about whether we will be repaid for that kindness. It seems that our pursuit of freedom has led to a slavery, a captivity to fear, and the pursuit of freedom that ends up letting us down and ends up dividing us. But blessedly for us, verse 10 also offers hope. But now you are God's people. But now you have received mercy. What has changed in this equation? That change comes to us in Jesus, who offers us true freedom today. You see, Peter, even though he was a stumbling block to Jesus, receives Jesus' peace. Peter receives Jesus' forgiveness after Jesus returns from the dead. Peter proves in the end to be that strong foundational leader that the church requires. Peter is able to be a true rock, not a stumbling block anymore, but a true foundational stone for Jesus by receiving the peace and forgiveness that only Jesus can offer. So today, we have that same hope as well, because Jesus wants us to be those foundational stones for him to build up God's people into a single people who give and receive mercy the same mercy that Jesus shows for each of us by choosing to die on a cross and being willing to offer us the same peace and forgiveness that he gives to Peter. So today, we are free. We have that true freedom in Jesus. Martin Luther, our spiritual namesake, our spiritual ancestor, writes in 1520. He writes about the true freedom that we as Christians have. That true freedom is the freedom to follow Jesus through the trials, the crosses of life. The freedom to 
follow Jesus in confidence that we will receive the same new life that Jesus now has. In other words, we are free to live lives of mercy. In this world that would encourage us to search out and, and grasp and fight for human freedom, instead in Jesus, we have true spiritual freedom. True spiritual freedom, which gives us hope in the new life that Jesus offers us. This true freedom is found in acts of mercy, true kindness shown to others, true kindness that works for new life and fairness for all. Therefore, today, in Jesus Christ, instead of us stumbling around, vainly pursuing a human freedom that will ultimately let us down, instead, today, we can be those foundational stones for Jesus. So instead of stumbling, we can stand on that firm foundation of Jesus' love, offering mercy, giving and receiving mercy, experiencing new life for us all. Amen.